What made, what made you switch from marine biology to acting? Uh, that wasn't a conscious decision. The decision was more or less made for me. Um, I was in a situation where uh, I'd run out of funding basically for school and uh, was looking for a means to potentially earn some more income. And the idea was to go back. And, uh, you know, good fortune struck. I was quite lucky early on with the uh, audition for Pleasantville. And I was in my early 20s at that time, and I thought I'd make one movie and pay off my loans and go back and finish school, and it just hasn't stopped. So the passion for marine biology is still there. And, uh, you know, that's my first passion, so I still find other ways to fulfill that. And, uh, by the way, how much time do you manage to spend at the ocean? Oh, with, uh, with diving and all that, quite, quite a bit. I mean, it depends on location a lot of the time. Uh, but uh, fortunately enough, where I reside, I live here in California, I have, uh, you know, I have access and I go diving and you know, dive for lobsters, free dive a lot still, and um, spend a lot of time in and around the water. So uh, whenever I can make the time, I do it. And can you see the sea where you live? Is this important to you? Oh, yeah, I can see the sea. But the thing for me is, uh, you know, as much as I appreciate the ocean, um, you know, earth sciences in general have always fascinated me. So the older I get, it's not as just specific as, say, to stuff that caters to the ocean. Like, for instance, um, um, just I, I really like the, um, just the way everything really all comes together. So to me, I think it's more about the symbiotic relationships and, and more and more, I think, just the earth science as a whole. Um, botany has really kind of taken a hold of me lately. And even birding, which sounds funny because I always thought when I was younger that that was for old men. But uh, I really enjoy it. Um, and with that, a lot more photography, so photographing nature. Uh, I used to be a really big hunter. And uh, what I've found as I've gotten older is I enjoy taking photos of the wildlife more because I can pull the trigger 100, 200, 300 times and I can come back and see that animal the next day. So um, it's just kind of a realization that I've, mad, I've made really as of late. And uh, the older I get, the more I appreciate that. So let's talk about your, um, your role uh, association. Where have, you, where have you been for your role campaign? Tell us more about your work within the organization. It must be so mm -hmm. clinically. Yeah, with Roe, things reach out worldwide, things have, have moved along really well. I mean, its inception was last year. Um, last year alone, I think we had three or four outings. We had one this year. We had the, the tornado in Tuscaloosa in Alabama. But uh, this year, for the most part, it's been relatively sleepy, which has been nice. Uh, but uh, what's happened, there's, there's been a, a bit of a groundswell. And organically, what's happened is we've had different brands express interest and potentially sponsoring us or helping us with our cause. So the thing that's nice is we put something out there that we believed in and, uh, and others have jumped on. Davidoff, for instance, with their, you know, their donation. And, uh, and since then, uh, still, they make uh, chainsaws and a lot of power tools. And we use a lot of their equipment in extraction, uh, especially in Tuscaloosa, cutting trees to you know, remove debris and help people gain access to their home. Um, and uh, it's just, it's exciting. It's exciting to see what's happening. So the thing that I like is, you know, so long as I'm alive and kicking and I'm making money and things are going well, you know, Roe can continue. But there's going to come a time where I might not necessarily be able to fund it. And so, you know, to know that there's, you know, the outside interests that are coming in now, to know that there's a good chance that this is something that could potentially be around well after I leave this planet, it's a, it's a good feeling. And, uh, and the, the like-minded, I think the people that believe in it, because for me it was really just an idea. And as a single person, what's an idea? It doesn't really mean anything. What makes it live and breathe are the people that subscribe to the philosophy and the idea of it. And the people that are involved have just taken it to a completely different level. So um, I'm really fortunate. And the people that are involved are just really good people. I'm talking about the people that are involved. Have you recruited any other fellow actors to support you in it? Uh, no, not anybody really within the entertainment industry because um, um, it really requires uh, field experience. Um, you know, as a first responder, whether you're EMT, paramedic, doctor, ER doctor, 
Um, very few of us, you know, myself included in the few, you know, on the early trips were really, I was really one of the only ones that didn't have any professional experience. And I realized that my skill set was limited. So I didn't like that feeling. As much as I picked up while we were there and in the field, I realized that there was more to learn. And that's a big part of it that really keeps me, I think, drawn is like, you know, we're only here one time. And I love the arena. I love learning about first aid and, you know, anything pertaining to medicine. It's just, it's fascinating to me. So uh, it's one thing I continue to work on and, and, and work towards and work forward with. And, um, you know, hopefully within not too much longer, I'll feel qualified, super qualified. But, uh, you know, we have some really talented people, uh, doctors that have had, you know, 25, 30 years experience, you know, that have, have volunteered their time readily, uh, weeks of their life every year to the cause. So um, it's nice having that pool, you know, first off to have people that are that qualified, that are willing to come along on these trips. And then they're also willing to give you the time and the attention when they see your willingness to learn and your enthusiasm for it. Uh, they give you a lot more attention and are willing to really kind of walk you through things. So, uh, you know, from EMT certification to potentially now I'm considering, you know, maybe even going to school to becoming a paramedic, which uh, would be the next step for me. So we'll see. And now, can you describe for us mm -hmm. a perfect weekend of work? Perfect weekend off work? Off work. Or of work? Of work. Of work? A perfect weekend of work. Off work, okay. Um, I, I think for me, it'd be, be something outdoors. I mean, I don't know if it would be, maybe, maybe it'd be a cool hike um, to like, uh, like a removed waterfall with like a nice swimming hole. Uh, you know, a lot of scenery with a lot of nature and animals. Or, you know, maybe a diving weekend out at the islands. Uh, someplace tropical would be nice. Um, but, uh, Definitely something having to do with uh, the water and nature. Good friends. And as you spend so much time around water, do you use, use certain products to look after your skin? Um, I'm pretty carefree, to be honest with you, for the most part. I, like I'll go on and binges where, you know, now that I'm getting a little bit older, you know, people tell me I need to wear lotion because so much exposure to the sunlight. but. Uh, I've been told I have a little bit of Cherokee Indian in me, and so I think I like to think that maybe makes me a little more resilient. <laughs> but uh, I don't I don't take care of my skin the way that I should, to be honest with you. I just I don't. Um, when I do stuff like this, I have people that take care of me. <laughs> it allows me to be a little more lazy. But uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm pretty low maintenance. So I get up in the morning, I throw on my clothes, and I'm out the door usually within you know ten minutes. And men may not be under so much pressure as women aging in front of the camera, but surely you must consider some damage. Do you think about this kind of answer? Yeah, I, I think more and more. But, you know, there's also arguments now that a lot of people are saying that, you know, we, we don't get enough vitamin D. And the problem is, is, you know, people, for one, they spend too much time indoors. And then when people do spend time outdoors, they're putting on 50 sunblock and their body's not absorbing or creating the vitamin D that it needs to. So there's two philosophies there. I tend to subscribe to the one where you know, maybe sunblock isn't necessarily as good as people want to believe. There's give and take with anything. So anything I think with moderation, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna spend an expended, uh, extended period of time out on the ocean or in the water or on the boat, I'll be sure to cover my face with sunblock. But uh, you know, for outings, like if I'm going on a hike, even if it's a half day or full day hike, rarely will I, I'll just put on a hat and go get it. But, uh, you know, as, as I get older, I'm sure that, you know, I'll probably see more of the effects and then I'll probably try to play catch up. <laughs> Reverse the process. Tell us some of your best places to visit in California. Oh, gosh. I really love um, Big Sur, uh, Monterey, Carmel. Uh, big fan of that area. And, you know, I love the, uh, the redwood forests. Um, the Channel Islands are incredible. Uh, most of my time is spent, you know, Santa Barbara North, my leisurely time. I, you know, was born and raised in Southern California. When I was younger, I spent a lot more time in San Diego and in Baja, Mexico. But as I've grown older, I appreciate more where it's, where it's more lush and more green. Um, I especially am fond of the Pacific Northwest. So even as you press out of Northern California and into Oregon and into Washington, Vancouver and Canada, 
uh, Vancouver Island, the San Juans. I, I just, I love it up there. Um, the rain's a little too much for me to live there full time, but uh, as far as a place to visit's concerned, to me that's, that's heaven on earth. I love that, that zone. It's just, it's magical. And there's nowhere else like it on earth. It's, it's unique. And finally, we'd love to be standing close enough to ask. I'm close enough. Mm -hmm. But what do you smell like wearing Zavidov? Uh, to, me, to me, the thing I like about this, the fragrance is that it doesn't smell designed. I mean, obviously it is, and I think that's the design behind it, is to not smell designed. So to me, it has more of a kind of a natural kind of embodiment of different scents. And I don't know that I can necessarily say that I smell this or I smell that. I just know what I like when I smell it. And, you know, and I've liked it from when I was a small kid. So uh, it's just been the, the fragrance of choice when I want to wear a fragrance. Uh.